So it is my honor to introduce to all of you my friend and the President-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. It's very familiar territory news conferences because we used to give them on a almost daily basis. I think we probably maybe won the nomination because of news conferences. And uh, it's good to be with you. We stopped giving them because we're getting quite a bit of inaccurate news. But I do have to say that, uh, and I must say that, I want to thank a lot of the news organizations here today because they looked at that nonsense that was released by maybe the intelligence agencies. Who knows? But maybe the intelligence agencies, which would be a tremendous plot on their record if they, in fact, did that. A tremendous plot. Because a thing like that should have never been written, it should never have been had, and it should certainly never have been released. But I want to thank a lot of the news organizations for some of whom have not treated me very well over the years, uh, a couple in particular, and they came out so strongly against that fake news and the fact that it was written about by primarily one group and one television station. So I just want to uh, compliment many of the people in the room. I have great respect for the news and great respect for freedom of the press and all of that. But I will tell you, there were some news organizations, uh, with all that was just said, that were so professional, so incredibly professional, that I've just gone up a notch as to what I think. Okay? All right. Uh, we've had some great news over the last uh, couple of weeks. I've been quite active, uh, I guess you could say, in an economic way for the country. Uh, a lot of car companies are going to be moving in. We have other companies. Big news is going to be announced over the next couple of weeks about companies that are going to be building in the Midwest. You saw it yesterday, Fiat, Chrysler. Big, big factory going to be built in this country as opposed to another country. Ford just announced that they stopped plans for a billion-dollar plant in Mexico, and they're going to be moving into Michigan and expanding very substantially a, an existing plant. I appreciate that from Ford. I appreciate it very much from Fiat Chrysler. Uh, I hope that General Motors will be following, and uh, I think they will be. I think a lot of people will be following. I think a lot of industries uh, are going to be coming back. We have to get our drug industry coming back. Our drug industry has been disastrous. They're leaving left and right. They supply our drugs, but they don't make them here to a large extent. And the other thing we have to do is create new bidding procedures for the drug industry because uh, they're getting away with murder. And pharma. Pharma has a lot of lobbies, a lot of lobbyists, and a lot of power. And there's very little bidding on drugs. We're the largest buyer of drugs in the world, and yet we don't bid properly, and we're going to start bidding. We're going to save billions of dollars over a period of time, and we're going to do that with a lot of other industries. Uh, I'm very much involved with the generals and admirals on the airplane, the F-35. You've been reading about it. And it's way, way behind schedule and many, many billions of dollars over budget. Uh, I don't like that. And the admirals have been fantastic. The generals have been fantastic. I've really gotten to know them well. And we're going to do some big things on the F-35 program and perhaps uh, the F-18 program. And we're going to get those costs way down. And we're going to get the plane to be even better. And we're going to have some competition. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. So we've been very, very much involved. And other things uh, we had. Jack Ma, we had so many incredible people coming here. Mr. Arno, uh, they're going to do tremendous things, tremendous things in this country. And they're very excited. And I will say, if the election didn't turn out the way it turned out, they would not be here. They would not be in my office. They would not be in anybody else's office. They'd be building and doing things in other countries. So there's a great spirit going on right now, a spirit that many people have told me they've never seen before, ever. We're going to create jobs. I said that I will be the greatest jobs producer that God ever created. And I mean that. I really, 
I'm going to work very hard on that. Uh, we need certain amounts of other things, including a little bit of luck. But I think we're going to do a real job, and I'm very proud of what we've done, and we haven't even gotten there yet. I look very much forward to the inauguration. It's going to be a, a beautiful event. We have great talent, tremendous talent, and uh, we have the all of the bands, or most of the bands, from the different from the different uh, segments of the military. And I've heard some of these bands over the years, they're incredible. We're gonna have a very, very elegant day. The 20th is going to be something that will be very, very special, very beautiful. And I think we're gonna have massive crowds because we have a movement. It's a movement like the world has never seen before. It's a movement that a lot of people didn't expect. And even the polls, although some of them did get it right, but many of them didn't. And that was a beautiful scene on November 8th as those states started to pour in. And we focused very hard on those states, and they really reciprocated. And those states are going to have a lot of jobs, and they're going to have a lot of security, they're going to have a lot of good news for their veterans. And by the way, speaking of veterans, uh, I appointed today the head secretary of the Veterans Administration, David Shulkin. And we'll do a news release in a little while. I'll tell you about David. He's fantastic. He's fantastic. He will do a truly great job. One of the commitments I've made is that we're going to straighten out the whole situation for our veterans. Our veterans have been treated horribly. They're waiting in line for 15, 16, 17 days. Cases where they go in and they have a minor early stage form of cancer and they can't see a doctor by the time they get to the doctor. They're terminal. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So David is going to do a fantastic job. We're going to be talking to a few people also to help David. And we have some of the great hospitals of the world going to align themselves with us on the Veterans Administration, like the Cleveland Clinic, like the Mayo Clinic, a few more that we have. And we're going to set up a, a group. These are hospitals that have been the top of the line the absolute top of the line. And uh, they're going to get together with their uh, great doctors. Dr. Toby Cosgrove, as you know, from the Cleveland Clinic, has been very involved. Ike Pearlbunner has been very, very involved, one of the great men of business. And we're going to straighten out the VA for our veterans. I've been promising that for a long time. Um, and uh, something I feel very, very strongly. So you'll get the information on David, and I think you'll be very impressed with the job he does. Uh, we looked long and hard. We interviewed at least 100 people. Some good, some not so good, but we have a lot of talent. And uh, we think this selection will be something that will, with time, with time, straighten it out and straighten it out for good, because our veterans have been treated very unfairly. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Questions? Like yes. Mr. Yeah. Mr. President, like, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. A um, couple of aspects of the intelligence briefing that you received on Friday that we're looking for further clarification on. Sure. First of all, did the heads of the intelligence agencies provide you with a two-page summary of these unsubstantiated allegations? And secondly to that, on the broader picture, do you accept their opinion that Vladimir Putin ordered the hack of the DNC and the attempted hack of the RNC? And if you do, how will that color your attempts to build a relationship with a leader who has been accused of committing an act of espionage okay, against all, the United States. These meetings, as you know, are confidential and classified, so I'm not allowed to talk about what went on in the meeting. And, but we had many witnesses in that meeting, many of them with us. And I will say again, I think it's a disgrace that information would be let out. Uh, I saw the information, I read the information outside of that meeting. Uh, it's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. And it was gotten by opponents of ours, as you know, because you reported it, and so did many of the other people. It was a group of opponents who got together, sick people, and they put that crap together. So uh, I will tell you that not within the meeting, but outside of the meeting, uh, somebody released it. Uh, it should never have been, number one, shouldn't have even entered paper but it should never have been released. But I read what was released, and I think it's a disgrace. I think it's an absolute disgrace. As far as hacking, I think it was Russian, but I think we also get hacked by other 
countries and other people. And I can say that, you know, when, when we lost 22 million uh, names and everything else that was hacked recently, they didn't make a big deal out of that. That was something that was extraordinary. That was probably China. Uh, we, had, we have much hacking going on. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're going to do, we have some of the greatest computer minds anywhere in the world that we've assembled. You saw just a sample of it two weeks ago up here where we had the six top people in the world that were never in the same room together as a group. And we're going to put those minds together and we're going to form a defense. And I have to say this also. The Democratic National Committee was totally open to be hacked. They did a very poor job. They could have had hacking defense, which we had. And I will give Reince previous credit because when Reince saw what was happening in the world and with this country, he went out and went to various firms and ordered a very, very strong hacking defense. And they tried to hack the Republican National Committee and they were unable to break through. We have to do that for our country. It's very important. And just, and just to the, la and sorry, just to the last part of that question where I said, how could all of this potentially color your attempts to build a better relationship with President Putin? Well, you know, President Putin and Russia put out a statement today that this uh, fake news was indeed fake news. They said it totally never happened. Now, somebody would say, oh, of course he's going to say that. I respected the fact that he said that. And I, I'll be honest, I think if he did have something, they would have released it. They would have been glad to release it. I think, frankly, had they broken into the Republican National Committee, I think they would have released it just like they did about Hillary and all of the horrible things that her people, like Mr. Podesta, said about her. I mean, what he said about her was horrible. If somebody said about me what Podesta said about Hillary, I was the boss, I would have fired him immediately, or that person, because what he said about her was horrible. But remember this, we talk about the hacking. And hacking's bad, and it shouldn't be done. But look at the things that were hacked. Look at what was learned from that hacking that Hillary Clinton got the questions to the debate and didn't report it? That's a horrible thing. That's a horrible thing. Can you imagine that if Donald Trump got the questions to the debate, it would have been the biggest story in the history of stories. And they would have said, immediately, you have to get out of the race. Nobody even talked about it. It's a very terrible thing. President yes, President, like President, 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 President. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. Uh, on that intelligence report, uh, the, the second part of their conclusion was that Vladimir Putin ordered it because he aspired to help you in the election. Do you accept that part of the finding? And will you undo what President Obama did to punish the Russians for this well, or will you keep if, it in place? If Putin likes Donald Trump, I consider that an asset, not a liability. Because we have a horrible relationship with Russia. Russia can help us fight ISIS, which, by the way, is number one tricky. I mean, if you look, this administration created ISIS by leaving at the wrong time. The void was created, ISIS was formed. If Putin likes Donald Trump, guess what, folks? That's called an asset, not a liability. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna get along with Vladimir Putin. I hope I do, but there's a good chance I won't. And if I don't, do you honestly believe that Hillary would be tougher on Putin than me? Does anybody in this room really believe that? Give me a break. Okay. But President Obama steps. Will you keep on make clear whether during your visit to either Moscow or St. Petersburg you engaged in conduct that you now regret, and that a reasonable no, observer I, would a reasonable observer say that you are potentially vulnerable to blackmail by yeah. Russia or by its intelligence agencies? Let me just tell you what I do. When I leave our country, I'm a very high-profile person. Would you say? I am extremely careful. I'm surrounded by bodyguards. I'm surrounded by people. And I always tell them, anywhere, but I always tell them, if I'm leaving this country, be very careful. Because in your hotel rooms, and no matter where you go, you're going to probably have cameras. I'm not referring just to Russia, but I would certainly put them in that category. And number one, I hope you're going to be good anyway. But in those rooms, you have cameras in the strangest places. Cameras that are so small with modern technology, you can't see them and you won't know. You better be careful or you'll be watching yourself on nightly television. I tell this to people all the time. 
I was in Russia years ago with the Miss Universe contest, which did very well. Moscow, the Moscow area, did very, very well. And I told many people, be careful, because you don't want to see yourself on television. Cameras all over the place. And again, not just Russia, all over. Does anyone really believe that story? I'm also very much of a germaphobe, by the way. <laughs> believe me. President, we have one more question, sir. How you plan to disentangle yourself from your business, but first, I have to follow up on some of these Russia remarks. Based on your comments here today, do you believe the hacking was justified? Does Russia have any leverage over you, financial or otherwise? And if not, will you release your tax returns to prove it? So I tweeted out that I have no dealings with Russia. I have no deals in Russia. I have no deals that could happen in Russia because we've stayed away. Uh, and I have no loans with Russia. As a real estate developer, I have very, very little debt. I have assets that are, and now people have found out how big the company is. I have very little debt, I have very low debt. But I have no loans with Russia at all. Uh, and I thought that was important to put in. I certified that. So I have no deals, I have no loans, and I have no deals. We could make deals in Russia very easily if we wanted to. I just don't want to because I think that would be a conflict. So I have no loans, no dealings, and no current pending deals. Now, I have to say one other thing. Over the weekend, I was offered $2 billion to do a deal in Dubai with a very, very, very amazing man, a great, great developer from the Middle East, Hussein Demak, a friend of mine, great guy, and was offered $2 billion to do a deal in Dubai, a number of deals. And I turned it down. I didn't have to turn it down, because as you know, I have a no-conflict situation because I'm president, which is, I didn't know about that until about three months ago, but it's a nice thing to have. But I don't want to take advantage of something. Uh, I have something that others don't have. Vice President Pence also has it. I don't think he'll need it. I have a feeling he's not going to need it. But I have a no-conflict of interest provision as president. It was many, many years old, this is for presidents, because they don't want presidents getting, I, I understand, they don't want presidents getting tangled up in minutia. they want a president to run the country. So I could actually run my business. I could actually run my business and run government at the same time. I don't like the way that looks, but I would be able to do that if I wanted to. I'd be the only one that would be able to do that. You can't do that in any other capacity, but as a president, I could run the Trump Organization, great, great company, and I could run the company, I think the country, I do a very good job, but I don't want to do that. Now, all of these papers that you see here, yes, I go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on that before we get into conflicts. Do you believe the hacking was justified, and will you release your tax returns to prove what you're saying about no deals in Russia? Uh, well, not releasing the tax returns, because as you know, they're under audit. But every president uh, since the 70s has had oh, gee, a required audit from the oh, IRS. Gee, the last six heard. have released him. But as I've president, sir, is taking You know, the only one that cares about my tax returns is the reporters. Okay? You they're don't the think the American public is concerned I, about no, that? I don't think so. I, I won. Do you believe the hacking? When I became president? Do no, you I don't think they care at all. They, I don't think they care at all. I think you care. I think you care. First of all, you learn very little from a tax return. What you should do is go down to federal elections and take a look at the numbers. And actually, people have learned a lot about my company, and now they realize my company is much bigger, much more powerful than they ever thought. We're in many, many countries, and I'm very proud of it. And what I'm going to be doing is my two sons, who are right here, Don and Eric, are going to be running the company. They are going to be running it in a very professional manner. They're not going to discuss it with me. Again, I don't have to do this. They're not going to discuss it with me. And with that, I'm going to bring up Sherry Dillon, and she's going to go, these papers are just some of the many documents that I've signed, turning over complete and total control. Sir, to 